I was connected with a neuropsychologist that works with the athletes in the NBA and the NFL. And he, he looked at my brain, it's equal on three parts. I'm gonna go ahead, drop some bombs for you. 98 percentile IQ test. I had a 75 percentile of all human beings, but it was counting eight numbers backwards off the repeat. So I'm gonna work on that one. The other one's 98 percent Tesla Freud. At the age of 14, Twitter billionaire Jack Dorsey became fascinated with dispatch routing and wrote open source software that is still used by many taxi companies today. At the age of 12, Tesla and SpaceX billionaire Elon Musk sold the code of a space themed PC game called Blast R for approximately $500. By the way, that game is linked in the description if you want to play. At the age of 8, another tech billionaire, Michael Dell, applied to take a high school equivalency exam and learned to program in junior high. At the age of 7, the billionaire former Facebook president, Sean Parker, was programming on an Atari 800. At the age of 3, a billionaire hedge fund legend, Jim Simons, was contemplating Zeno's paradox. I discovered, as a very young kid, maybe 4, something called Zeno's Paradox. Did you ever hear of Zeno's Paradox? My father told me that the car could run out of gas. And I was disturbed by that notion. I, it never occurred to me. But then I thought, well, it should run out. It could always use half of what it has, and then it could use half of that, and then half of that, and it could go on forever, and so it would never run out. So now, it didn't occur to me, yes, but it wouldn't get very far either. But, uh, but the idea that in principle you didn't have to run out of gas was uh, kind of a, a profound thought for a, for a very little boy. When we look at the key characteristics of those who become billionaires, particularly tech billionaires, one trait stands out, IQ. Now this seems to be a politically incorrect subject for many people, however it is vital to understand this reality. So IQ is reliable and valid. That's the first thing. It's more reliable and valid than any other psychometric test ever designed by social scientists by a factor of about three. That's fact number one. Fact number two is it predicts long-term life outcome at about 0 0.3, 0 0.4, which leaves about 85%, 70 to 85% of the story unexplained, but it's still the best thing that we have. As well as this, and this is a very sensitive subject, understanding statistics can help to explain racial differences in IQ. The average Ashkenazi IQ is somewhere between 110 and 115, which is about one standard deviation above the population average. And so what that means is that the average Ashkenazi slash European Jew has an IQ that's higher than 85% of the population. That's a lot higher. Now, that doesn't make that much difference in the middle of the distribution, okay? But geniuses don't exist at the middle of the distribution. They exist at the tails of the distribution. And you don't need much of a move at the mean to produce walloping differences at the tails. In an age of increasing ideological division, it is important to approach these issues in an objective and rational fashion. Now, of course, it doesn't take a 150 IQ genius to become a millionaire by compounding returns over time, for example. Now, as well as this, net worth is not the single determining factor of a successful life. Now, one other thing about that. There's a real danger in the ethnicity IQ debate, and the, the danger is that we confuse intelligence with value, or that we include we we confuse intelligence with, yeah, with human value. That's a better way of thinking about it. It does seem that's a key aspect of creating the exponential value required to become a billionaire is IQ. Now, of course, there are exceptions to every rule and undoubtedly there will be some billionaires who don't necessarily have stratospheric IQs. But as Rich Colgar puts it here, a new class, the scary smarts have inherited the world. The surest way to become a billionaire today is to be born with a 150 plus IQ and 800 math sat skills. This would describe Gates, Google founders Sergey Brin and Larry Page, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, and most other whiz bangs in internet, biotech, and algorithmic finance. There are other factors at play for those who become billionaires, some cite look, timing, socioeconomic class, and various other factors. Timing is certainly a very important factor. The bottom companies had intense funding. They even had business models in some cases, but they didn't succeed. I tried to look at what factors actually accounted the most for success and failure across all these companies, and the results really surprised me. The number one thing was timing. Timing accounted for 42 percent of the difference between success and failure. Team and execution came in second, 
And the idea, the differentiability of the idea, the uniqueness idea, that actually came in third. Chamath Palihapitiya, an early Facebook executive, has even said that a crucial trait of those who become billionaires is actually insecurity. How do you think you become, you know, super successful? You think these people, I mean, look, I've met these people. You think these people are normal? <laughs> do you think they're like, ho hum, um whole, let's be friends and have a burger? <laughs> that's not what, that's not what these people are. Yeah. Okay? They're not. No, they're no. deeply, profoundly insecure. They manifest a lot of that by their need to find something that they can latch onto that makes them feel less inferior, i.e. superior. And the success tends to be proportional to that feeling. That's true. And you see a lot of people you meet, like whenever you meet somebody who's like, I'm a teacher and I'm really happy, that person is whole. That's what it means, okay? And when you meet like a super billionaire who's like trying to become a super bega bega billionaire, they're super insecure. <laughs> it's just true. It's okay, it's nothing wrong with that, but that's just the reality. Overall, it is clear that IQ is a vital aspect of the modern knowledge economy. The following study looked at the effect of cognitive ability on wealth. Using three log scale assessments, they calculated cognitive competence sums for the mean and for the upper and lower level groups for 90 countries and compared the influence of each group's intellectual ability on gross domestic product. It found that the mean national cognitive ability predicts productivity, but the cognitive ability of the 95th percentile of the population, the intellectual class, this is the smartest 5% of the population, is a more important predictor of a nation's wealth. So going back to Dr. Jordan Peterson's analysis, it is those at the tails of the distribution that play the significant role. Therefore, as we shift from commodity capitalism to intellectual capitalism, the nations that nurture, cultivate and educate their cognitive talent at the tails of the distribution will win. For more compounded, valuable content, subscribe and like.